remember from an earlier episode, I am celebrating five years as a full-time artist this month in August. And to wrap up this month, I thought I would do a quick frequently asked questions that I get about being a full-time artist and what it's been like to be a full-time artist for the past five years. So one of the first questions I often get is, did you always make art? And the answer is no. I really didn't start making art consistently until about 2012 or 2013 when I took up mosaic. And I progressed from mosaic more and more into drawing and from there into art journaling and from art journaling into painting and eventually illustration. I did want to be an artist. I can remember falling in love with art as a young child. Um, I remember getting an art book when I was about seven, I think. And I, in fact, I still have it. And I remember spending hours and hours and hours looking at the paintings in that art book, so much so that when I finally saw Edward Hopper's The Nighthawks uh, in person at the Art Institute in Chicago, I burst into tears because it was like seeing an old childhood, much beloved friend. So I loved art from a very young age. I did start taking art lessons when I was in middle school and stopped in high school because I had a really, really horrible, horrible, mean art teacher in high school. And so I stopped taking art lessons then. I then substituted artist boyfriends for making art, thinking that somehow I could be an artist by proxy, and then eventually kind of gave up. I remember in graduate school in the 90s, I went back to attempting to make art, and I just didn't persist. I couldn't, I couldn't get myself to keep going. I couldn't keep going through the awkward hard parts. And so it wasn't really until I started making mosaic, which felt much more accessible to me somehow, so that was kind of my entry drug, that I started really being more consistent and from mosaic led into drawing and eventually to the kind of art that I do now. Another one of the questions I get is about money. In fact, one of the first questions I used to get when I told people that I was becoming a full-time artist is, how are you going to make money? And at the time, that was not a very big concern. I was very, very fortunate. I had already had a successful business before I became a full-time artist. I was an executive coach and I was a specialist in time management and work productivity, so I worked with corporate clients, and I had a pretty fair size nest egg built up in my business before I quit coaching and became an artist. I had funds and resources on which my business could rely. And also, my husband is full-time employed, so we have health insurance and we have all the kind of necessities taken care of. And so I was in a position in which I did not have to have a lot of income. That said, I've worked to develop multiple streams of income since I've developed myself as an artist. So as my skills have grown, I've worked to try to create other sources of income and try to kind of diversify more por my portfolio, so to speak. So I have a Patreon. I only have one patron so far, but I do know that Patreons, once built, can be very lucrative, so I'm working on that. Obviously, I'm working here on a YouTube channel and hoping that eventually my YouTube channel will monetize. And in the meantime, I'm working on developing products and trying to aim for licensing and also working to get illustration gigs, professional paid gigs. One of the other questions I get is, what is the biggest challenge about being a full-time artist? And I would say it's probably being my own boss. I already had a lot of self-discipline and a strong work ethic as a self-employed person because I had been a self-employed person for quite some time before I became a full-time artist. I think one of my bigger problems is not getting myself to do the work, but getting myself to actually rest and take breaks and have a sustainable pace at doing my work. A couple of the other challenges I have faced is patience with myself in terms of building skills. For a long time, I was really hard on myself because I felt like I should be farther along skill-wise than I actually was. And the other part that I struggle with having patience with is building an audience. This takes a lot of time. 
And social media has changed a lot over the past five years. It is much, much harder to build an audience on Instagram, for example. It is considerably hard to build an audience here on YouTube. And so it sometimes feels very hard or demotivating in terms of the amount of time and effort it takes to build an audience. Also, I've never really been that good at marketing. And part of the reason I've struggled with marketing is because of a lot of self-doubt. I think having a YouTube channel has actually really helped me in that regard because if I'm gonna show up week after week after week, I have to just suck it up and show up. And I think that that's really helped me in terms of my marketing. But that's another place that I've struggled and continue to struggle as a full-time artist. I get asked, what is the best part about being a full-time artist? And I would say it's being my own boss. I don't think I would make a very good employee anymore because I'm very used to setting my own hours and deciding what I want to work on and when. Also, being a full-time artist has been very good for me just from a psychological standpoint. I've certainly been happier. I felt more fulfilled and had a great deal more joy in what I do day in and day out. The last question that I'm going to answer today is what kind of advice do I have for anyone who would like to become a full-time artist? And I think there are a few things to consider. One is, do you really feel that you have the grit and determination to persist day in and day out, sometimes seven days a week, sometimes working many more than 40 hours a week to build a business. Building a business is hard. It's challenging. And there's a reason why most small businesses fail is because it's so hard and so challenging and it takes so much time. So I think the first question to ask yourself is, do I really have that thing that will allow me to persist through the hard parts of building my own business? And if the answer is yes, then I would say you can proceed toward building a full-time art career. A lot of being a full-time artist is showing up and making art even when I don't feel particularly inspired. And that is a skill. That is something I have learned how to do and I feel that anyone can learn how to do that. And that's very much part of being a full-time artist. Also, the more skills that you can build before you go full-time, the better. So I encourage you to learn Illustrator, learn Photoshop, learn Procreate if you're gonna work on a tablet. Even if you plan to work analog, having those kinds of skills are going to greatly benefit you because you're going to use those tools, maybe not Illustrator quite so much, but certainly Photoshop. And also just getting the basic skills down of what you want to try to accomplish. If you want to be an illustrator, nailing down good, strong illustration skills. Now, I violated this advice. I did not have these skills when I went full time. I was fortunate enough that I was able to dedicate the time and effort to learning those skills while I was a full time artist. So I was really lucky in that regard. But if you can build those skills before you go full time, that would be very helpful to you because you'll be able to get to the good stuff faster. So I hope you've found some of the answers to these questions helpful. If you have other questions about becoming a full-time artist or what life is like for me as a full-time artist, I'm happy to answer those. Feel free to put those in the comments below. little bit of a different approach this week. I did not do an intro, just dove straight in on the speed drawing of the little mountain chickadees and then a little short visit with Mr. Finch before we kind of had a little long chat there about being a full-time artist. So let me know how you liked the format this time around. It's a little bit different. Oh, and the stickers. I forgot to mention the stickers. So I did that design in Procreate and I found a deal on Sticker Mule. You should keep an eye on Sticker Mule if you want to do stickers. Every once in a while they do one of these 10 stickers for a buck. And they're little, but still it's 10 stickers for a dollar. 
So I got 10 stickers made, just kind of try that out. Super pleased with how those come, came out. I'm gonna be giving away some to my newsletter subscribers and then ordering more for my shop update that I'm gonna do sometime this fall. So that's kind of cool. I also put that same design on a t-shirt. I'm not quite ready to release that yet because I want to make a couple of adjustments to the design when it printed. Um, the white didn't show out quite the way I wanted it to. It, it, details you probably are not even interested in. But anyway, um, it's gonna be out on a t-shirt and I'm also working on a bandana design with that same acorn woodpecker and oak leaves and acorns. So super excited about that. And I'm sure you'll be seeing that as it gets done and comes out. If you're new to this channel, if you would, please subscribe. That is really helpful to me. And also if you'd give it a thumbs up and leave a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks so much for watching. Bye now.